in my city. A young man was visited by some of his colleagues and they told him, you've been struggling for a long time. We can help you. We've been helped. The young man was willing to be helped considering the economic situation of my country. And he uh, said, all right. There is a guru. There is a mahanta. There is a maharaji that no are you there? That normally appears. <laughs> my city has a water body dividing it. So a maharaji comes on Wednesday and sits by the beach in the night. That's where they form the brotherhood. So the other two people that were advertising the brotherhood to the young guy had gone there and received help from that altar. Yo, you are welcome to this channel. Kindly subscribe to be notified when a useful video drops. God bless you. And there was evidence that they were helped. So they came to market this young man. And the young man felt interested because they had a lot of money. And they brought him to the place. So he showed up. After they did the initial rituals and all the tests to confirm that they had this, the will to follow through. And they passed that initial test. The next test was that they had to break one of the Ten Commandments. So there was a puzzle. Many commandments written in a sack. You pick the one you will break. So the guy picked. He picked. He picked adultery. He said, yes, you are going to commit adultery. Before 14 days, you commit adultery. He said, that's not difficult. That's, you can arrange. They said, no, 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 no. It's your mother. So you commit adultery with... Are you with me? Now, unfortunately for him, before he even got to this stage, they had already taken a syringe full of his blood. A sacrifice had already gone ahead. So he couldn't pull out again. Please help me pray to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor that you can stop before the sacrifice. You cannot stop after the sacrifice. The guy left the place. Commit my mother. He actually attempted about eight times. Then he realized he did not have the heart to prosecute that mission. He now called his mother on the 13th day and said, I, I joined something. Because the first set of people who are going to be helping this night are people that joined something. If you join something. Or somebody went somewhere and got some of the apparatus from the place and committed one or two of them to you. We will need to help you this night. He said, I joined something. And this thing that I joined, they say, if I don't sleep with you in 14 days, I will either die or run mad. And the reason why he couldn't be deflected was because a sacrifice had already gone ahead and the thing was speaking. Just speaking. His blood was taken. Fortunately for him, he ran mad. At least that is better than... <laughs> that is better than dying. So, after many years of wedding, I now decided on a certain day to wear my wedding suit. White, you know? Those days, I wore white. It was the day I wore that wedding suit that those, the family of this young man came to meet me and to ask me that they were sent to come and meet me that I have the ability to restore the sanity of their son. I told them that I'm on break. I have, you know, just like you have holiday in the office, you take leave. Me, I've taken leave from pulpit. So I'm not interested in pulpit matters. I just want to, you know, spend time. Because I wasn't staying, are you, are you with me? I wasn't staying in the same city with my family. 
So I came just to blend, to play with my son. My boy Joshua was, a, was like my daughter. I came to play with him. You know that is also work, it's serious work. <laughs> so my wife now said, there are people outside. I said, I know. She said, can you help them? I said, I'm here for you people. It, she now said, it is me, we you came for, that we are suggesting that you should help them. As part of being with us, help them. <laughs> So I started to help them. We went to the psychiatric ward of the hospital. No, oh, you need to see people in that ward. One, oh my. All of them were put in that state by altars. I know you won't believe. One guy could stand like this. Eh? Till, till we left, he was in that mode. You will know it's a demon. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. I say, is this one your own? They say, no. Is he your own? See our own there. This guy, his name was Sunday. And when I met him at the end of the world, he was jabbing his forehead on the wall, trying to break his skull. If we had not come, you would have heard that the guy died by self-inflicted death. Why was he in that condition? The altar was already speaking. And I hope you know what I mean by the altar is speaking. This aspect of speaking is a sacrifice. That's the first. There are two voices on every altar. So the first speaking is the utterance of the sacrifice. Are you there? And now says Sunday. I, I screamed at him. Sunday! He, he answered me as if he was very far. Yeah. Then I began to rebuke the spirit. Sunday began to manifest. And I thought it was only Sunday that would manifest. Ma there was manifestation everywhere. <laughs> they, <laughs> wait, don't clap yet. Don't clap yet. Wait, wait. When the manifestation started, the nurses ran to the place and they bound me hand and foot. It was not the demons they cast out. It was me. They cast me out. Cast. So, you know those nurses in the psychiatric world, what they are doing is they are trying to tame demons. So that's their job. So I now told the family that if you want me to continue with this exercise, discharge that boy. Discharge him. Discharge him. So I came to pray for him by 12 noon. They were able to secure his discharge by 4 p.m. in the evening. And they brought him to our prayer tent. I was waiting for them. Prayed for him. 13 minutes. I was timing. 13 minutes. And he slept in my hand. He had not slept in 14 days. He slept in my hand. So I laid him on the ground. I asked one of our pastors, watch over him. If he wakes up, let them give him food. And give him glucosate. Then he will sleep again. If he wakes up the second time, Make sure he's filled with the Holy Ghost. Then we'll come and do night vigil with him. So he woke up the first time. They gave him food. He finished the whole food. He noticed that he was, he had peed on his body. He had pulled on his body. And he was asking, why is he like this? Why is he like this? They said, no problem. Eat first. He ate. And even though, with that same clothes, he slept again. By the time he woke up, we were there. Led him to Christ. Got him filled with the Holy Ghost and took him on a, an all night drill. We forced him to speak in tongues till daybreak. The family said, He's well now, let's go. I said, He's on admission. Leave him. We did night vigil for three nights. Then I now gave him a lecture that the demons will come again. But when the demons come, this language I have taught you, pray it. The demons cannot possess you if you are praying this language. <laughs> uh. 
Pray that language. Please help me tell your neighbor, pray. Pray that language. That language. The thing about altars is this. If the altar that you have raised is a righteous altar, it is only a righteous spirit that can receive your transmission. If the altar that you have raised is a demonic altar, it is only a demonic spirit that can receive your transmission. But the moment you put a sacrifice of the altar, notice you can no longer turn back. You turn back before sacrifice. Because once that sacrifice hits the altar, the process has started. Communication has started. Hey, you cannot undo. Are you there? You cannot undo the speaking of your sacrifice. You know, are you, are you with me? 